So, everyone, um, this is a very great pleasure to um, have our Brazilian Justin Bieber. Um, so, this guy, this guy actually is a very good friend. Uh, Rodrigo, uh, we had us a pleasure to be the keynote today, coming straight to Brazil for only one day. So, definitely, thank you very much. And, uh, well, then, up to you. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm glad that a lot of people make it. That's really good to see. Uh, okay, so as we said, I came straight from Brazil to give this talk. It's more a keynote kind of talk, so it's going to be not technical. Uh, usually, I give technical talks, but I hope I manage to put some things together that will make sense to everybody. Uh, basically, the idea of the talk is to be a critic. Uh, I guess the security industry nowadays in the way they are doing stuff. So as most of you already know, I work for security companies for a long time now, and uh, I'm seeing how the products are being developed and how the priorities are being created inside those companies. And uh, I see sometimes the company wants to do something better, the company is able to do something better, the company sometimes has something better to do or to release, but they don't manage to market that because the companies buying have no idea what they are buying. There is a very a very big problem on the security industry with the security experts and uh, the way this is shown everywhere. So I will try to discuss how the security research uh, is done inside the companies. What are the values that security research creates for the companies? And uh, I will try to give like some opinions regarding that and what we can do, which kind of questions we can ask when we are looking into the security solutions or into a security expert to better define what is a security expert in the world. So, uh, a small agenda. Basically, I will try to explain why this why regarding security research. Why everybody starts saying, hey, now I am a security researcher. If you look into LinkedIn, all the profiles nowadays of security people say they are security researchers, security writers, journalists. What? Journalists and security researchers. It's kind of uh, difficult to understand, right? Everybody now, instead of using security engineer, uses security expert. It's kind of a good way to sell yourself, right? I'm a security expert. So uh, I, would, I would try to uh, talk about that and talk about how a company can build a real security research team and get real value from security research, no matter if you are a security vendor or not. Uh, so the idea is to really discuss this problem with the security industry. Uh, I guess that everybody here understands that there is a problem going on. Like uh, we see more products every year, right? The revenue of the security companies is growing. Still, the security issues are also growing. The problem is not being solved. So there, is, there must be something wrong. Companies are investing even more in security, and still they are getting hacked. And uh, we see the incidents are just growing. So it's because we, doing some, we are doing something wrong. So we need to try to uh, discuss what is going on, why that's happening. Uh, I will try to demonstrate how the vulnerability finding works, what are the process behind the courtings, and why the security vendors want to say, hey, we have security research. And, uh, well, we will try to be fine doing that, okay? <coughs> so, uh, I guess that everybody here understands that uh, the programs are buggy, and they will be buggy for, for a long time, I hope. I want to keep doing the job. I, I, I really want to keep doing my work. And uh, that's, that's great. That, that's part of the process, right? They need to evolve, they need to develop very fast, and they need to be cheap. Right? They don't want to pay a lot for a very experienced uh, developer. So the companies will keep doing buggy program, programs. Uh, there is no way around that. Okay? I had a discussion in the past with some people, and they say, yeah, but at some point the security mechanism will evolve so much that the bugs will disappear. Okay? This is a, a tendency everybody tries to say. Hey, at some point, the static analyzers will be so good that they will find all the issues. Like, the components of the operating system will be so well done that they will avoid the exploitation of any remaining issue. So, this is actually not true. 
because the investments on security goes down as soon as the security level goes up. So uh, it's very easy to see that. You can get a one big software vendor, get their product, and look, hey, they started doing a lot of security tests, they started to invest a lot of money on security, so the security of the product is starting to grow, and at the same time, they stop it doing the same kind of process. Why? Because it makes sense. You want to compete, you want to make money. So as soon as you achieve a level that is higher than the competitor, you stop to invest. You are okay. You don't need to be the best. You just need to be better than the others, right? You, you don't need to have the best that you can. You just need to be the best in the market. That, that's something that is real, and the companies need to make money, so that kind of makes sense. And this is one of the problems that we see nowadays. Uh, security, don't try to solve all the problems. They don't, just don't. They just try to be better than the competitor. And be better than the competitor means you just need to have better numbers or better scores or better results according to some tests, right? So that's one of the problems that we see nowadays. Uh, the other problem is like the threats are evolving. Nowadays we see professionals doing the job of the attackers, right? So the guy is not just, you know, like a kid hacking stuff anymore. That's not what happens. We have professionals, people who live hacking into systems. They live writing exploits, writing malwares. That's their way of life. So since it's a way of life of many people and they make really good money doing that, we see a tendency of speeding up. They are developing the same tools that the security vendors are developing, the security researchers are developing, the attackers are also developing. The difference is the attackers share much more information than the security companies do. Okay? So it's very common to see, hey, a security company is researching something. Let's say, let's name some research that's being released at, uh, here at Hakito. Uh, I don't know, Shockwave, right? There is a talk about Shockwave exploitation, right, by tipping point. So they are, re they are researching a lot of stuff in Shockwave, for example. So this research, they partially release information, they share information that's, that's really great, but a lot of information is just not shared. A lot of tools that are being developed are just remaining internal tools. And this is a big problem because the attackers usually share much more than the security vendors itself. And uh, we all know there is a lack of training so the tendency is to the problem to grow. So uh, the companies don't want to train everybody. And uh, even the companies that try to train everybody, you have the problem of who is giving the training. The guy who is giving the training really knows what he's talking about. Uh, and this is my point. The biggest problem in the security industry is the experts. I will explain why and I will give some economics reasons for that. So. Uh, we also face the old age challenge, right? Uh, in the past, it was very common to see a vulnerability uh, was released, and the timing between the first host and all the hosts to be attacked were really high. But the problem is, nowadays, it's not high anymore. Nowadays, we find old days on the wild all the time. It's not an exception anymore. Like, the companies still have this idea of threat modeling, where they just don't expect all days to exist. They don't expect the attacker to use a new vulnerability to hack into your system. And that, that's not true anymore. And all days are available all the time. All days are there. It's a reality. If you don't deal with that reality, sorry, but you're going to be hacked. And uh, the biggest problem is an all day remains uh, active or worth of money for a long time. An all day lifetime is really high. That means if you find a vulnerability, if you write an exploit for this vulnerability, you, you probably will have this vulnerability for a long time. So this idea of, hey, it's really expensive to find all days and use that for an attack, is just not true, okay? It's not really expensive, okay? And the, the, the amount of money that the attacker will make using all days it's so high, that makes sense, why not, okay? If you look into the way the attackers are communicating and they are relating and they are selling stuff, the attackers now have a real market, 
right, for selling stuff. They sell tools and they use business uh, initiatives in the way they do the selling. So this is a reality, and uh, the security companies need to adapt, the security professionals need to adapt, and the security researchers as well. So uh, another thing is, how do we classify what is an exploitable bug and what is not? Uh, it will be more clear why I'm talking about how do we classify what is exploitable and what is not, when I explain uh, how do we hide a security research. But basically, imagine you have this piece of code, okay? It's two lines piece of code. Is this an exploitable bug or not? So what do you guys think? If you control the destination very much, yeah. Well, but this is, this is the problem, okay? I am just, uh. this is the entire problem. It's two lines assembly code problem. I'm moving a value, which is 41, 41, 41, 41 to EAX, and I'm calling EAX. And it's in the heap, and you control the heap, then, okay, it's exploitable. Yes, but do you control the heap? No, no but if there's an exception handler, you can control it. But there is an exception handler in this yeah. code? Okay, so if you can accept the algorithm, but if there will be anything that will take the exception, you can control it. Yeah, but in this case, there is something? No. No, right? There is input. There is any input from anywhere in this code. No, right? The code is moving 41, 41, 41, and then it's calling it. So how come this is not exploitable? There is no input at all. Everybody agrees? No input. The user has no influence over this code. So how come that the bank exploitable from Microsoft says not only it's probably exploitable, it says it is exploitable for sure. That's a cool one. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that's, that's just bullshit, right? So this is the kind of tools that the vendors are using when they receive a vulnerability from a researcher. They use this kind of tools to say, hey, this vulnerability is exploitable, this is not, high probability of exploitation or not, level three, two, one, right? It, it's very cool to see level 3, 2, 1 to exploitability, right? Well, it's based on what? How difficult it is for somebody to write an exploit? It depends on who is writing the exploit, what is the motivation, right? So, uh, the truth is, uh, all the tools and all the, the ways that the vendors are dealing with stuff tries to speed up things and try to simplify things, right? That's the idea. The, secure, the vendors itself, imagine like Microsoft, Adobe, Sun, name it, any software company. They receive many, many vulnerabilities, hundreds, thousands of vulnerabilities. So they receive too many vulnerabilities for them to really analyze. So what they need to do, they need to try to automate. But this automation is only giving value to bullshit stuff. And it's becoming even more difficult to differentiate what is a good work and what is a crap work, right? So at some point, all the vendors started to say, hey, come on, if I just release bullshit vulnerabilities, I'm going to receive the same credits as if I spent real time doing the research. So what happened? What do you think will happen? If I invest a million dollars, I can release I don't know, 25 bullshit vulnerabilities that will receive the same credits as only one vulnerability. What do you do if you are a vendor? Well, that's why the credits of the release are going down, right? It's just economy. It makes sense to release bullshit vulnerabilities. After all, the tools that are saying if it's exploit or not, the way they are determining things are so, so buggy that it makes sense to just release whatever you want because in the end you are going to receive the same credits as somebody that did a real job. That's the problem that we have in the industry. Uh, 